This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Full slate of baseball on tap for today, so we're going to break things down and get you ready for tonight across the diamond, talking about some money lines and strikeout props for tonight that I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook based on my model. Not a ton of baseball left to be to be discussed for this year, so trying to finish off the year on a high note, get back on track for myself personally, and hopefully find some winning bets for tonight. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research. Here to take a look at tonight's MLB slate over at FanDuel Sportsbook and break down where my models are showing value in the money line and strikeout prop markets. And we'll also go back through the recommendations from last week here on the show for some soccer and some NASCAR and recap what went well and what did not. And what went well was all the soccer recommendations from Ed and Austin. We'll talk about all that later on. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Austin is back with us again tomorrow. We'll talk about EPL match week number two. We also had Ed on to preview the semifinals in the Women's World Cup. Uh, we talked about the Sweden Spain game that went uh, under that went down this morning. He had some thoughts in Spain the final. It didn't advance, so you can find those thoughts from Ed in the covering the spread podcast feed right now, along with the Fanduel YouTube page and over on Fanduel TV Plus as well. It's also. Dinger Tuesday over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Hit a home run with $5 Dinger Tuesdays on FanDuel Sportsbook. Each Tuesday, all customers will get $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit by both teams when you place a $25 to hit a home run wager on MLB games. And the best part about Dinger Tuesdays is even if your bet loses, FanDuel will pay you $5 for every home run. There's no better place to bet America's pastime than on America's number one sports book. Head over to your FanDuel account and download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to pick your home run hitter. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in now to the MLB recommendations for today over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I have two money lines and three strikeout props that I like as of right now. Let's begin things off with the money lines. And let's talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. They're currently even money at FanDuel Sportsbook plus 100, whereas they've shifted to minus one or five or so at most other books. So getting them at even money, pretty enticing. They're also a value at that number by my model with win odds at 52.5% versus the implied odds here, which are at 50%. This is all because of the fact that I kind of believe in what you say Kikuchi has been doing here recently. Kikuchi has been a guy who across his entire career has had decent peripherals, but never came through with good results. That was because he let up a lot of really hard contact and That's a skill. It is a skill to suppress hard contact, and it was not a skill that Kikuchi used to possess. But over his past 13 starts now, which is a pretty large sample, Kikuchi is actually doing a good job there. His hard hit rate allowed is 36% with a 36% fly ball rate. So that's a radical deviation where he was at before. He's doing that while still getting strikeouts. The strikeout rate is 27%. So... Not surprisingly, the peripherals for Kikuchi are very good. He has a 3.77 skill interactive ERA, but that's not the concern. The concern of Kikuchi is always translating good peripherals into good results, but he actually is doing that now. Again, it's a 13 start sample, which is not a small number, but his ERA is 2.79. 
So although the 2.79 is fluky, and it's not going to stay that low, it's still really good. And it's encouraging to see the results actually match, and in this case, exceed the peripherals for the first time in his entire career. Even if we assume that Kikuchi regresses toward the underlying numbers, I think it's clear that he is a better pitcher than he was earlier on this year as he's begun to successfully suppress hard contact for the first time. It is a tough matchup here facing off with Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler, a very good pitcher who's pitching well right now. But with this game being in Toronto, I think the Jays should be favored. Again, I have a 52.5%. Their implied odds are 50%. So I think the Jays are a quality bet right now over at FanDuel because of what you say Kikuchi's been doing across the past couple of months. That's the first money line. Second money line is a lot more uncomfy. And that's going to be the New York Yankees taking on the Atlanta Braves and... It is as worrisome as it may sound to bet the Yankees right now and bet against the Braves. And it's it's really rough. Um, it stinks to bet against the Braves. Who, they are an absolute wrecking ball right now. And they're also facing Luis Severino, who the Yankees seem like they want to take out of the rotation, but really can't because of injuries to Nestor Cortez and some other stuff. So clearly this is not a, oh, we got confidence in again. We're going to stick him back in the rotation. It's a, we got to do it because we have no one else to go to. I would say, though, that there are some kind of similar issues with Bryce Elder on the Brave side of things. He is not in pristine form right now. Over the past 13 starts for Elder, he's been using more sinkers. And more sinkers is typically not a great thing because you want to limit balls in play and sinkers let up contact. In those 13 starts, the skill interactive ERA for Elder is 5.15. He has a 15% strikeout rate. And his results are almost just as bad. 4.95 ERA in that time as well. The issues have been more apparent for Elder recently. If we look even like at a smaller sample, he's let up five plus earned runs in four of his past six starts. Three of those did come on the road and he's at home here tonight, but it's still concerning to see the results swing so heavily against him. And for the season, Elder does not have massive home road splits. So I don't think it's a concern. I don't think we should toss it out just because the rough starts for him have come on the road. My model has the Yankees win odds closer to 40% than the implied odds at 35.2%. So I understand why the market is here because the Braves are a juggernaut right now and the Yankees are not. But I think it's gone a bit too far given the fact that Elder is not you know, some shutdown guy we need to avoid by any means. The Yankees offense is better now than it was before, even if it's still not perfect. So I do think the Yankees are the right side in this game. So the Yankees money line plus 184 and the Blue Jays money line, even money, are the two places I'm turning for money lines for tonight. The first strikeout prop is also going to stick on the similar topic and talking about Bryce Elder once again. Elder strikeout prop is currently at four and a half strikeouts at FanDuel Sportsbook. The under is minus 112, and I've got him projected almost a full strikeout below that. Uh, it's actually, it was minus 116 before, it's now minus 112, so it seems like there's been some interest in the over on Elder, which is surprising to me, is what I would say. I mentioned before that he's been leaning more on his sinker recently, and sinkers are not strikeout pitches. If we go back to the 13 start sample on Elder, where he's been using more sinkers, he has hit the over on four and a half just four out of 13 times. If we look at his six home starts, he has done so in one out of six starts. So again, not huge home road splits for Elder, um, even though most of his really bad outings have come on the road. The Yankees active roster, about a league average strikeout rate against righties, so not a boost there. And as a result, I've got Elder projected pretty well below this at 3.69 strikeouts. Again, minus 112. It does imply that there has been some interest in the over on Elder because it was the over was minus 110. It's now minus 112. I do still think this is the right side of this one. Elder under four and a half minus 112. Because this does play pretty well with the money line, you could consider going with the same game parlay here, uh, putting the Yankees money line at plus 184 paired with the Elder strikeout under. If you were to do so, that's plus 332 on the money line of FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that's pretty fair, honestly, and I don't mind it. So if you are someone who enjoys the same game parlays, I think it's a pretty good opportunity because you always want to make sure that your bets play well together, that they can both happen simultaneously without drastically decreasing the odds that the other one occurs. These actually correlate pretty well. So 
I, I, as always, tend to play things uh, separate, so that'll be my path personally. But if you did want to go towards the same game parlay, if you had some sort of boost on parlays for tonight, I think that could be a route. Me personally, again, single legs, because that's my personal process, my personal preference, but they do play better in this instance than they typically would. So you can't consider tying the elder strikeout under together with the Yankees money line if you were to want to. Two other strikeout props I like for tonight. The first one is one that bit me last week. I took the under on Tuki Toussaint's strikeout prop, and he went out and he threw, uh, he had nine strikeouts. So not ideal. Under for Toussaint tonight at five and a half is minus 118. And I do think that is the right way to play things here. And it is concerning because Toussaint has had actually now consecutive starts with nine strikeouts. So I understand why the market's pretty high on him. But at the same time, in those two games, Toussaint didn't get a ton of whiffs. His swing and strike rates were 9.2% and 10.4% respectively. And he still walked a lot of guys. And walks drive up pitch counts in a hurry. Now, for Toussaint, that's not as big of a concern now as it was before because the White Sox are letting him go deep in games. And that does matter for my strikeout projections a lot. So I bumped up his, his pitch count projection about seven pitches from where it was before, which is a pretty big deviation. But even with the strikeout or the, the pitch count increased, I still have Tucson projected for 5.29 strikeouts, and that's the average number. And he can have outings where it's like nine. So even if it's 5.29 strikeouts, that does imply his median is below, uh, is low enough where we can consider laying minus 118 on the under here. I just want to bet on regression after two huge games for Tucson, where he's had nine strikeouts in consecutive games. The Cubs active roster will strike out for sure. So I think that's another reason why this number is a bit high, but they're not a high strikeout team. They're actually a bit below average in that regard. 22% against righties in the current active roster. Tucson is on the road. It's also in Chicago tonight. So not a huge trek across town for him, but I do think the under at minus 118 is the way to go to this one. So Toussaint uh, under five and a half minus 118 in the Cubs and White Sox game. Final one is actually an over. So we did find one over to go with uh, for tonight in the strikeout department. That is in the Dodgers versus Brewers game. Adrian Hauser over three and a half strikeouts is currently minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think this under accounts for a change Hauser has undergone recently. He had a start or a, a situation where he made one start in relief and it seemed like the Brewers were not super through enthused with him, but ever since he came back in the rotation, Hauser has been throwing more sliders and sliders, unlike sinkers are great pitches for strikeout props because they do lead to a lot of whiffs. And we've seen that for Hauser because he's made seven starts back in the rotation and he's had, he's gone under three and a half strikeouts just one time in that span. That includes a strike an outing where he had 10 strikeouts against the freaking Braves. Now that game was at home. If you look at the three road starts for Hauser, he's had five, five, and three strikeouts. Uh, the one under in that span came against the Braves. That was the second time he was facing them in a uh, in consecutive starts. So it kind of makes sense that a team that good would get to him when he was on the road. The big concern here would be if the Dodgers were to pummel him because Hauser does let up a lot of hard contact. And, you know, a strikeout prop projection kind of has to bake into the possibility that Hauser just gets wrecked because he could leave that game early, not get to the over as a result of that. So that could be definitely in play. That could get him in trouble. But the best way to prevent hard contact is to allow no contact at all. So with this number being so low at three and a half strikeouts, I have no problem taking the over. I think it's a very good bet for tonight. Hauser over three and a half strikeouts, minus 110, where I'd want to go there. So three strikeout props for today. Toussaint under five and a half, minus 118. Hauser over three and a half, which is uh, minus 110. And then also Elder under four and a half, minus 112 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, I did forget when I was prepping this morning that it's Dinger Tuesday. So let's kind of search through here quickly to try to find if we can get some uh, some solid Dinger bets for tonight. I have one guy in mind, although it looks like this game might not be posted as of yet. Okay, so the game I was going to look at was the Cardinals and the A's. I want to see what Lars Newtbar's home run odds are once those are up because he's facing Freddie Tarnock and Tarnock, pretty big fly ball guy in the minors, most likely Freddie Tarnock as the A's have not announced uh, their official starter for today, but let's up a lot of fly balls. And ever since the all-star break, Newtbar has been a pretty big fly ball guy, a lot more barrels, a lot more uh, balls in the air. So 
I find that pretty enticing personally. So what I would do is once FanDuel posts the A's and the Cardinals game, which won't occur until the A's announce their starter, I would check out where Lars Newtbar checks and he's been batting leadoff recently. So should get some pretty good volume out of him. That's always fun and uh, always a positive for us as, as well. So I would check out that. Other one that I think is somewhat intriguing is I want to see what Michael Harris's uh, home run odds are for tonight. And this one does not mesh well with the Yankees money line because we're betting against them and taking a look at Michael Harris. But last night we saw Harris move up in the order because Ozzy Albies is out. It sounds like Albies is going to shift to the uh, injured list here pretty soon, which means we can probably expect Harris to bat high in the order once again. Harris's home run odds are plus 560 at FanDuel Sportsbook and I actually think that's good enough to take him. So if you're looking for a Dinger Tuesday bet, I would go with Michael Harris. He was my Dinger uh, my Dinger bet or Dinger recommendation on the solo shot last night. So let's run it back here once again. Harris last year was phenomenal. Uh, putting the ball, uh, just making hard contact with the ball constantly. And it led to a 19 home run, which is not a huge number, but a 217 ISO. Now this year, the home run numbers haven't been as big as ISO is about 40 points lower. But I think part of that might be bad luck because his hard hit rate is actually up one percentage point to 46%. And his fly ball rate is also up. And if you look at Harris recently, it does seem as though the hard contact has been inching, inching, inching up. I find that pretty enticing for a guy who has proven in the past that he can be a guy who puts up pretty decent home run numbers. If you look at Harris since the All-Star break, his ISO in that time is 162, so about the same as it was before. But now, if he's going to bat second each night, that's going to be a pretty big boost to him with regards to volume. Got a, got a lot of good protection around him in the order. So I do find that pretty enticing personally. And I think that if you're looking for a uh, dinger bet for Dinger Tuesday, I think the Harris plus 560 is probably the way you want to go there. So check on Lars Newtbar once that game is up, but then uh, Michael Harris, also a fun one to turn to if you're looking for some outlets in Dinger Tuesday. And again, that game could feature a lot of home runs. Total in that game is 10 runs right now. I would not be shocked if we see both sides adding to that total. So Dinger Tuesday recommendation will go uh, with Michael Harris plus 560 and then check out Lars Newtbar later on as well. That's wrap up the baseball side of things for today. But as mentioned, we do want to go back through last week and recap recommendations from the weekly sports here on the show. Let's start with Women's World Cup. We had Dr. Ed Fang on to preview the round of eight. And you can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. Find his work at thepowerrank.com. And Ed, in that round, went two for two on his money line recommendations, or on his, I should say, two his two advanced recommendations. He had Spain at minus 180, 188 against the Netherlands. They won that one two to one thanks to a goal in extra time. And then he had Sweden uh, topping Japan at plus 140. And Sweden did defeat Japan two to one. So couple wins there for Ed. Spain did defeat Sweden last night. Uh, so Sweden futures are now dead for Ed. But he said on yesterday's show, he was hedging out of those or hedging those by betting Spain to win over Sweden straight up. And also again, Ed did discuss his thoughts on Spain taking on England likely in the final. We'll see if, how things go in tonight's match. But uh, he had some thoughts on what to do with England if that game were to occur uh, in the final. So if you want to hear Ed's thoughts on Spain potentially versus England, check that out in your Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Sticking with soccer, we had Austin Cass on last week to preview match week one in the EPL. You could find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. And Austin, like Ed, also won both of his recommendations. He had Brighton's first half money line over Luton Town at minus 145. Brighton scored in the 36 minutes, and they won the first half 1-0. So a win there at minus 145. Other one was Newcastle uh, minus 140 over Aston Villa. Newcastle won that one 5-1. to one. So an impressive victory there. Impressive week by Austin. And honestly... If you listen to Austin last year, you're probably not surprised because he had a really good year last year, a continuation of what he did all of last year here on the show. And excited to have him back on the show tomorrow to talk more EPL. NASCAR last week was in Indianapolis. I had three recommendations for Cup and one for Xfinity. Hopefully you read the betting guide over a FanDuel research because I did do the outright there uh, after practice at 18 to 1 on Michael McDowell. So I think the betting guide is a pretty key compliment to this podcast it does go up every week over at vandal research talking through um it'll have the same recommendations as the show as long as the odds are still the same 
and then I'll add stuff in after practice and qualifying, usually Sunday morning, once markets have moved there. So would recommend checking that out as well over at FanDuel, uh, FanDuel.com slash research. On the show, I had three top 10 bets. Those were Ty Gibbs plus 195, Alex Bowman plus 250, and Ryan Priest at 8-1. to one. The Bowman one hit pretty easily. No real sweat there. He was fast on Saturday. His odds closed, I think, around even money for a top 10. And he ran up front all day. He finished fifth. So no sweat there, honestly. Pretty good day. The plus 250 cashed. Gibbs is also fast Saturday. And I think he closed around minus 120 or so for a top 10. But he got spun out super early in that race. And it pushed him all the way back to 27th. And there were no cautions after that. But Gibbs is so fast, he managed to work his way back towards the front and finished about two seconds behind the top 10. He finished 12th. Um, just, I thought he drove really well. So the process was there, I think, even though it did not cash. As for Priest, he was off all weekend. So did not come close to the 8-1 to one. one. But I like the results on Bowman. I like the process on Gibbs. I like the process on Bowman too. And uh, whiffed on Priest. But overall, felt pretty good about my read on the Cup Series side of things. In Xfinity, my only recommendation was John Hunter Nemechek, 1,800 to win. He ran around eight the entire race and never really was in contention. Uh, so that would miss. But again, betting guides on Vander Research allow me to expand on my thoughts at practice. So I'd recommend giving this a read on the Cup side of things when applicable. That is going to wrap things up for today here on Covering the Spread. I want to give a big thank you to all of you, as always, for tuning in. As mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow. Austin Cass is going to preview EPL match week number two for us. We'll break down his takeaways from match week one. Take a look forward to match week two and talk about the traditional markets there. And then uh, we have all some NFL on Friday. Pitching Ninja back with us on, or NFL Thursday. Pitching Ninja back with us on Friday. All right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across baseball for tonight. Enjoy Women's World Cup semifinal as well. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> 